My name's Angelo, and welcome to We Want Picks. UFC Mexico is this weekend, and I'm going to give you my best bets for that card. But before I do, let me give you $50. The only thing you need to do is go to wewantpicks.com slash bets, sign up with any one of our betting partners, make a deposit, and we send you $50 as a thank you. It's affiliate marketing. You're going to use the link. You're going to sign up. They're going to pay me, say thank you for the customer. And then I'm going to slice off some of that money and give it right back to you. Wewantpicks.com slash bets. Sign up, make a deposit. We send you $50 as a thank you. This is how we did last week. I think in general, most people did pretty well at UFC 298, but if you zoom out a little bit and look at all of 2024, not only did we do well at UFC 298, we've done well on every single card this year. We have not had a losing card in 2024. It has been a wildly successful year. One of those wild successes is the safety parlay. The safety parlay continues to be the beacon of stability in a very volatile betting space. I have hit 11 of the last 12. I have hit nine in a row. That's an all-time record for me. Overall, it hits at a 73% event rate and the lifetime ROI is 31%. The safety parlay, again, a beacon of stability in the volatile space of MMA betting. What I will say, and just a reminder, this is a sketchy card, A, and B, You notice none of these numbers say 100%. Just be careful. Anyway, you can unlock the safety parlay for UFC Mexico and every other event for only $10 a month. And that one month, that $10 will get you four different events. That's four safety parlays. Four weeks of bets, tools, insight, and more. Just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member at the top. It is only $10 for an entire month. You're also going to get things like the line movement tracker. It's not just some bets. It's not just some picks. You're going to get tools. One of those tools is the line movement tracker. This week specifically, there is some wild line movement. We have a lot of people that have just taken off. We have some people that have flipped from underdog to favorite. You can unlock the tools, the information, and more. We want picks.com. Just click become a member at the top. Before I show you my actual bets, let's talk about generalities. Let's talk about some confident favorites as a whole and then some solid underdogs. Then I'll show you my actual bets. And then I'm going to show you a really cool way to get some really straightforward bets and odds. And a card like this should be your go-to move. But let's do this in order. We'll start with some confident favorites. Listen. This card is at elevation. This card is loaded with dangerous fighters. And this card is loaded with lighter weight class guys. This is a very tricky card. I do think most of the favorites, at least on paper, should win. If this is not at elevation, I like most of the favorites. You add in elevation, and elevation messes everything up, specifically round lines. All of a sudden, you have two fighters that should go the distance. One of them's exhausted, gets finished. All of a sudden, you have two fighters where they're going to throw like crazy. Edgar Chavez, that fight should definitely not go the distance, but... It's at elevation. Maybe they both get exhausted. They can't finish each other, and it's sloppy. So my word to you is be cautious this week. We all ate at UFC 298. We all did insanely well at UFC 298. There is no reason to give back half that, give back half that money because we got a little greedy the week after. So my word to you is just be, be careful. We got UFC 299 around the corner. We have one of the worst fight nights ever next week. But there's actually some decent spots on there. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I think Brandon Moreno, I think these odds at minus 280 are a discount. I think Brandon Moreno should dominate this fight. I think he's better literally everywhere. Brandon Roy Val's tough. Brandon Roy Val's dangerous. But Brandon Roy Val can't hang at that level. Brandon Moreno has proven that he can be a world champion. Proven he could fight some of the best on the planet. Proven he could work through adversity. Yes, he just lost his belt. But that was a razor-thin fight that a lot of people think he won. Then we have Muhammad Naimov. Listen, I have him listed as the most confident favorite, but these odds are starting to get way too gone. I think Muhammad Naimov wins this fight. He should be better everywhere. He's got power in his hands. He can wrestle. He can grind. He should be better everywhere against the guy that's got some wild striking and some jujitsu nerdery. But I have this weird feeling that Muhammad Naimov is going to dominate, gas, and then lose. I don't know why I have that feeling. I just have that feeling. He doesn't strike me as an insane cardio kind of guy. We've already seen him slow down. He slowed down a little bit against Nathaniel Wood. He was dropped against Nathaniel Wood. And now he's a minus 565 favorite. Seems a little too far gone for me. I do have a bet on him, but 
We placed that bet a little while ago, and those odds weren't like this. We'll talk about that in a minute. Edgar Chares. He's another guy. He's fighting an insanely dangerous Daniel Lacerda. An insanely dangerous Daniel Lacerda. Yeah, Edgar Chares' opponent can't seem to win a fight in the UFC. 0-4-1. Just cannot seem to win a fight in the UFC. With that being said, he's almost won a couple of them. He almost had C.J. Vergara's head separated from his body. The guy's got insane pressure. Insane, like He is insanely dangerous. Problem is, he gasses, and that's it. He loses. Edgar Chavez is a very durable guy. We saw a couple minutes of this fight already, and Edgar Chavez was getting pieced up a little bit and then locked in a submission that the referee said, oh, we're done here, and then he said, oop, my bad. Shouldn't have done that. Either way, I do think Edgar Chavez wins this fight because Daniel Lacerda has shown that while he is wildly dangerous, while he is exciting, he can't seem to win fights at this level. And then Manuel Torres. Yes, he's fighting Chris Duncan. Yes, Chris Duncan is nuts dangerous, nuts tough. But I think Manuel Torres is just going to be too technical, hang out on the outside, avoid the power, avoid the chaos, and just piece up his opponent. So Manuel Torres, I think he gets it done. Minus 188. Seems fair. Obviously, Chris Duncan is dangerous. Obviously, Chris Duncan is durable. Elevation makes things wild, but I do think Manuel Torres should be able to just pink, 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 stay in the outside, then eventually finish a very durable Chris Duncan. When we talk about underdogs, you could say every dog on this card is a solid underdog, but we'll name some specifically. Christian Quinones. He does happen to be Jacob's Lock of the Week, but I had him picked already, meaning I'm not letting Jacob's Lock of the Week influence this pick here. I think Christian Quinones... While he is not on paper the better fighter than Hani Barcelos, he's not a better wrestler. He's probably not a more technical striker either. But he is young. He is durable. He is busy. He does have cardio. And Hani Barcelos is old, used up, worn out. Chin's not there anymore. Like, Christian Quinones should literally be able to win this fight just off of youth and pressure alone. That being said, Hani Barcelos, while he's not dangerous, is very good. Five-time Brazilian national champion wrestler. Good technical striking. Chin is gone. But he can fight. He can hang. But Hanani Barcelos did just lose a fight where he couldn't handle the movement. He couldn't handle the pace. And Christian Quinones could do that to Hani and get this done. Claudio Poilis, as pathetic as his last performance was, as insane as it was to watch a grown man scoot his ass across the mat like a dog with a dingleberry, Claudio Poilis is dangerous. It's pathetic watching him roll around for knee bar after knee bar and not get it. He has gotten it before, but not in his last fight. It is a little pathetic to watch that, but he is dangerous. I don't necessarily think he wins this fight, but this category isn't underdogs that Angelo is positive is going to win. This category is solid underdogs. Claudio Puelas is one of the most dangerous guys on this card. And if Faraz Ziam gets a little too close, plays that game a little lopsided, doesn't stay on the outside like he should. All of a sudden, they end up on the ground. Claudio players could have him in some very real trouble. Dennis Bondar, I do think he outright wins. He's a little wild, a little crazy, but I think he comes forward, gets through the guard, big slams, big takedowns, grinds on top, minus 105. Yeah, that's minus money, but he is the underdog here. His opponent's minus 115. I think Bondar gets it done. You can get plus odds if you go to bed openly. And then Brian Ortega. People sort of trash me for this pick. Brian Ortega opened as a good-sized dog. He opened at a minus 170 dog. That line full-blown flipped. And then it widened, and now it's tightening again. I think Yair Rodriguez is obviously going to be the better striker. He's got some dangerous jujitsu as well. And if Brian Ortega wasn't coming off a layoff with a bunch of injuries... I would be far more invested in him here. But Brian Ortega is tough. We watched four or five minutes of the first fight. He got Yair Rodriguez to the ground. He did have some success there. Yeah, he was thrown into an arm bar, but that wasn't a problem. Yair Rodriguez is going to be the more dangerous guy, but Brian Ortega is going to be the grinder. Brian Ortega is going to be the tougher. I think the more durable of the two and obviously the better grappler of the two. So I think Brian Ortega can win this fight. The You're starting to lose a little bit of value there. Maybe the weigh-ins will affect something. He was a bigger underdog just a few days ago, but this is a list of my who I think should be good favorites and who I think can be some solid underdogs. Here's a look at my actual bets. Before you say, dude, 2.25 units, that's it. Right after this, I am going to show you where you can get some really great value and what you can do to find some spots, click a couple of buttons, and then just sit back and enjoy everybody else's chaos. For now, here's my bets. Yes, 
only 2.25 units. And yes, one full unit of that is the safety parlay. And that's for all the reasons I mentioned earlier. We have the lightweight classes, which are wild to begin with. We have elevation, which changes everything. We have dangerous people on this card. I, I don't like this card for betting. There's apps while I'm here telling you to sign up for premium, which you should, it is the greatest value in this space. And we have all sorts of daily fantasy content and stuff like that. I am not going to sit here and throw up a bunch of bets for no reason just to say, I got nine units, sign up now because this is my actual money. Every bet that you see is a bet that I have placed with my money. And I'm not just going to throw money away so that I can talk about, ooh, I got 38 units on the board. That's just stupid. I'm not going to force anything that I don't like. When we get to Jacob, Jacob does have a whole bunch of bets going. So you can check his out if you'd like. But this is what I have. This is the only stuff I'm confident in. Quinones Barcelos, fight goes to a decision, right? That this fight goes to the scorecards. I don't give a shit who wins. If this fight goes to the scorecards, I got that at plus 165. Only a quarter of a unit because Barcelos' chin is long gone. And who knows what will happen. It's elevation. He's old. Quinones, not the better fighter. Quarter of a unit plus 165. Then I have a parlay. I did parlay three people I could absolutely think can get it done. You can notice I didn't have Rosas or uh, Yasmin Yaryui on the previous slide for confident favorites. You'll see that. And that's because they can both lose. Rosas can lose a bunch of scrambles to Ricky Tershos. Yaryui can just dominate Sam Hughes in the first round and then slow down and get grinded out and beaten up. Sam Hughes has not done or has done that more than once. She has played spoiler more than once. I do think the three of them win. That's why I slapped them together. We got plus 119, half a unit on that. Then Edgar Chavez and Manuel Torres. Again, two favorites I think could absolutely get it done. Half a unit on that, minus 127. Then the safety parlay is some of the best odds you'll get for a safety parlay, minus 109. As I mentioned, the safety parlay has been doing quite well. 11 of the last 12, 9 in a row, 73 event win percentage. Again, sketchy card. I don't love it, but I do think it'll get it done. That's why I put it on the board. You can unlock the safety parlay. All the bets we own picks.com. Click become a member. Let me show you where you can get some insane value and some very... I don't want to say easy because nothing in this sport is easy, but some very straightforward picks and bets. Let me walk you through this. First of all, we have a Discord server. The Discord server for now is 100% free. It is growing. We've got like 7,000 people in there. Eventually, I'm going to make it a premium only thing just because the more people you get, it, literally anybody can come in and create some chaos. We haven't had those problems. Doesn't mean we won't. So the Discord is 100% free. You can hop into the Discord. There's a link in the description of this video to the Discord. In the Discord, we have an API with Bet Openly. So as Bet Openly bets get placed, they live feed update into our Discord. And the way you can get that, so here is my Discord. On the left, you're going to see all the different channels, right? The general chat. You're going to see betting conversations, DraftKings conversation, prop-based DFS. People can post their picks, some food stuff, the winning tickets. You can see some of these are premium-only channels like the WWP Bounds, the premium alerts. Those are for premium members only. But the general is open, and so are the other channels. So you can hop in here, chat, share your thoughts. If you see this section, Bet Openly Bets, first you're going to get other bets. These are just every bet on bet openly for all sports other than MMA. If you click MMA bets, here's every single bet openly bet here. What I want to show you is the parlays. The way parlaying works at bet openly is you basically are the house. So if I put up a parlay, I put up a five fighter parlay, you know how you and everybody else loves doing that five fighter parlay with a massive payout. The way Bet Openly works is you take the other side of the parlay. If I have five fighters and I'm going to spend $3 to win a million, all you do is you bet the other side. And by betting the other side, the only thing you need to happen is for the parlay to break. You need one fighter to F it up. One fighter breaks that person's parlay, you get paid, not them. So what I recommend is you come in here. My Discord, the link is in the description of every YouTube video we do or go to wewantpicks.com. There's a button at the top that says join Discord. Come in here, look for a parlay. So right here, you're going to see 
house this parlay. They have Brian Ortega and, or sorry, they have the other side. So they have Yair Rodriguez and they have Brandon Moreno. So you could come in here and if for some reason Ortega wins or some reason Roy Val wins, you get paid. You spend 30 bucks, you'll get 25 in net profit. So they'll give you 55 back. And obviously you don't have to take the whole thing. You can bet $10, you can take the whole thing. So my suggestion to you is come in here, look for the parlays because there are always parlays where people get a little too risky, put too much together. Here you go. Here's one. All you need for this parlay to hit is Brandon Moreno to win or Ricky Tershos to win or Sam Hughes to win or Yair Rodriguez to win. Yeah, this one will 100% happen. Obviously, it's not the greatest odds in the world, but you don't need all of these people to win. You just need one of these to win. Just one. Just one of these people to win. And Moreno should win. And Yair Rodriguez, unfortunately for me, probably wins as well. So that's where I would say you can get some insane value. Here's another one. You need Hani Barcelos, who's a favorite, or Chris Duncan, who's a live dog, or Francisco Prado, who's a live dog. I actually don't like this one. But you get the point. You can come in here, find a parlay, find a side that makes sense for you, throw a couple bucks at it, and then you're just sitting back rooting for chaos, rooting for these other people to fail, which, hey, it's MMA. Anything can happen. Let's go back and check out Jacob's bets. Jacob has 14 plus units on premium right now. Some of those units are for future events. He's got some 299 bets up there. Like some of these are for future events, but he's got 14 total units going right now. Here's a teaser of a couple of his bets. You can get the rest of them on premium membership, but obviously Christian Quinones is his underdog lock of the week, plus 145. And then here's another teaser bet from Jacob. He's got Raul Rosas Jr. wins inside the distance, plus 135. Plus money on that is pretty surprising because, you know, while I do think this will be a tough fight for Raul Rosas, if he does win this fight, I can see it being by finish. He can create a scramble, snatch a neck, make something happen there. But Jacob's got a whole bunch of bets going for this card and other cards. You can unlock all of them. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. This is another look into bet openly. I just showed you on our server, our discord server, some of the live odds and how you can hop in there and get those bets, get those parlays. But bet openly is peer to peer betting. They're not a sports book. So I have a bet up there right now on my safety parlay. You can house the other side. You can bet against the safety parlay. So if the safety parlay breaks, you get paid. Same way I just showed you. And you can go ahead and get the anti-lock of the week. Jacob's lock of the week is Christian Quinones. You can grab the other side. You can bet on Hani Barcelos. And if you win, you take Jacob's actual money and put it in his pocket. You can check it out at wewantpicks.com slash betopenly or just go to betopenly.com. You're going to get phenomenal odds and there's nothing more satisfying than arguing with a complete stranger in the Discord or arguing with a complete stranger on YouTube saying, okay, I'll, go ahead, give me a bet opening link. I'll bet you. And then either they don't send the link because they were lying the whole time, pretty easy to call that out, or they do send the link and then you win and you have their actual money. My favorite thing to do when I'm arguing with people in the Discord, because that's what I do, and then I win the bet openly bet, I go buy lunch with it and I just take a picture. Here's a lunch I bought idiot. Thanks for free lunch. Anyway, check them out. It's a ton of fun. Obviously they are, um, a partner of ours, but they didn't pay me to go through this whole discord thing. That is a hundred percent genuine. There's a great way to take other people's money is bet against their wild parlays. Don't forget. I will send you $50. Just go to wewantpickscom slash bets, sign up with any one of our betting partners, make a deposit. And I send you 50 bucks as a thank you.